Now when it comes to autofocus points, the primary thing that people look at is how many there are. But perhaps something that's more important than the number of autofocus points is the type of autofocus point. Now before I continue any further, I do need to state that this explanation only applies to the AF system found on DSLR cameras. It will not apply to mirrorless cameras or any other type of camera that's not a DSLR, very particularly. So I'm going to start by breezing through how the whole thing works in your DSLR. This is a cross-section of a DSLR. The light enters through the lens, a mirror reflects it upwards into the viewfinder so we can see the through the lens image, and on the mirror itself there's actually a translucent section that lets some light pass through, hitting a secondary mirror just behind the main mirror that reflects it downwards into the autofocus module. That was a mouthful. So the AF sensor on your DSLR is actually somewhere below the mirror, not in the viewfinder and not on the sensor itself. Now the AF system works using a technology called phase detection. It's similar to how a rangefinder works. Now I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible here. Before that image hits the AF sensor, some optical elements split that image into two. Now imagine you are the AF sensor looking at me trying to figure out whether or not I am in focus. So like I mentioned earlier, the image of me is split into two before it reaches you, the AF sensor. So if there's two images of me, that means I'm out of focus. The further apart the two images of me are, the more out of focus I am. Now this is looking pretty trippy right now, but if I representing the subject is at the focal distance, that means I would be in focus, the two images of me that were previously split before hitting you should converge back into one by the time it reaches you. So if the AF sensor doesn't see a double image, that means the subject is in focus. Now your typical vertical AF point is oriented well vertically, so imagine looking through a vertical slit. So it also splits that image vertically, it splits the image up and down. Now here's when the problem comes. When you're trying to focus on something that's just a vertical line, and you split that image vertically, and looking through that vertical slit, it's kind of hard to find out how far apart that image has split, or even if it has split at all. So it's in situations like these when the AF system fails to find focus, which I'm pretty sure all of us have encountered before at some point, and I'm pretty sure all of us will agree it's pretty annoying. Now you can actually recreate that situation. If you're lucky enough, or well, unlucky enough, to own a DSLR that has a non-cross-type AF point, which includes my 5D Mark III, try positioning a non-cross-type AF point over a subject that's just a vertical line with no other details for it to catch on. Most likely, autofocus is going to fail. Now turn your camera 90 degrees and that vertical line now becomes a horizontal line that the AF sensor can pick up and now the camera can magically find focus again. So to solve that, there are cross-type AF points. So what cross-type AF points are is imagine two of those traditional vertical AF points just now, rotate one of them by 90 degrees and then stack them onto each other so they both become one point but there's two axes. So now it can split and compare the two images both vertically and horizontally and what this translates to in real life use means you get a higher hit rate on your autofocus. Now there's more, there's also dual cross-type AF points. There are basically two cross-type AF points stacked onto each other, one set is offset by 45 degrees, so now it looks like a star. So now they can do their thing diagonally, diagon alley, diagonally as well. So that's it for my explanation on how an AF system works, what's a typical AF point, what's a cross-type AF point, and what's a dual cross-type AF point. Hopefully when you see these in the spec sheet next time, you'll have a better understanding of what it actually means on the camera. So that's it for today, everybody. If you have any questions or any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.